Shell Silverstein. I asked for a hot dog with everything on it. And that was my big mistake because it came with a parrot, a peanut bonnet, a watch, wrench, and a rake, a flag and a fiddle. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah. A, par a flag and a fiddle, a goldfish, a frog, and a bird for a swim, a mouse and a mask. And that's the last time I asked for a hot dog with everything on it.
study or in our new jokes. <coughs> Side, 
all the night tide of my darling, my darling, my life, my bride. Sepulchre <laughs> <laughs> by the sea, inner tomb by the sound of the sea. <laughs> Sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and want to wear. Though as for that, the passing there, I warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had shod in black. Oh, I marked the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to win, I, I doubted if I should ever come back. And I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, a road diverged in a wood, and I, I took the road less traveled by. And, and that, that has made all the difference. <coughs> the fable has been shared by, by Edward, Edward Lear. Lear. Said the table to the chair, you can hardly be aware how I suffer from the heat and from the children on my feet. If we have a little talk, we can take a little walk and pray, let us take the air, said the table to the chair. Said the chair unto the table. Now you know we are not able, how foolish you talk, when you know we cannot walk. Said the table with a sigh. <sighs> It'll do no harm to try. I have as many legs as you, so let us walk. So they both went slowly down as they walked about the town with a cheerful walking sound as they toddled round and round. And everybody cried as they hastened to their side. See, the table and the chair have come up to the air. But going down an alley to the castle of the valley, they completely lost their way and wandered all the day. <coughs> Till to see them safely, safely back, they paid a ducky clack, and a veto and a mouse took them to their house. Then they whispered to each other, Oh, delightful little brother, what a lovely walk we've taken. Let us dine on beans and bacon. So the ducky and the little beetle, brownie mouse, and the beetle dined and danced upon their heads till they toddled to their beds. <laughs> He said he was right, if I knew he was wrong. 
We hated one another. The afternoon turned black. But suddenly my brother fell to the back. He said, oh, come on, you can't fight all night. I was in the wrong, so he was in the right. Backward Bill. By Shel Silverstein. Backward Bill. Backward Bill. Lives up way on the backward hill. Which is a sandy hole in the ground, but that's a hill turned upside down. Backward Bill's got a backward shack with a big front porch built out back. You walk through the window, you look out the door, and the cellar is on the very top floor. Backward Bill, he rides like the wind. Don't know where he's going, but sees where he's been. And his spurs, they go. Hey. And his horse, they go. Clang. And his six guns go. Banana. And there it goes. Bang! Backwards Bill got a backwards pup. They eat their supper when the sun comes up. And he's got a wife named Backwards Will. She's my own true height! Said Backwards Bill. Backwards Bill puts his hat on his toes. Puts his underwear over his toes. And comes every day to pay his boss. And a riding, and a smiling, and a carrying his horse. <laughs> Sundays by Robert Hayden. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue black coat. The cracked hands that ache from labor in the weekday weather made back to fire's blaze. No, no one, one ever, ever thanked him. When I'd wake, I'd hear the cold, splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he called. And slowly, I would rise and dress, feeling the chronic angers of that house. Speaking indifferent to who had driven out the cold, and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know? Of love, austere, and lonely offices. A narrow fellow in the grass. By Emily Dickinson. A narrow fellow in the grass. Occasionally rides. You may have met him, did you not? He's noticed that it is. The grass abides with the cone, a spot of chaps to see. And then it closes at your feet and opens further on. He likes a boggy acre. A floor too cool for corn. But when a boy in barefoot, I more than once at noon, at past I thought a whiplash, a grating in the sun. A stooping to secure it, it wrinkled and was gone. Several of nature's people I know complain of me. I feel for them a transport of cordiality, but never met this fellow. Attended or alone, without a tighter breathing, and zero at the bone. Kidnapped by Shel Silverstein. <coughs> This morning I got kidnapped by two masked men. They stopped me on the sidewalk and knocked me some candy. When I wouldn't take it, they grabbed me by the collar and pinned my arms behind my back and... Showed me in the back of a big black limousine. And they turned my hands behind my back with sharp and rusty wire. And then they put a blindfold on me so I couldn't see where they took me. And they put cotton in my ears so I couldn't hear their voices. And then we drove for 20 miles, or at least for 20 minutes. And they dragged me from the car down to some cold and moldy basement where they stuck me in a corner and went off to get the ransom, leaving one of them to guard me with a shotgun pointed at me, tied up sitting in a stool. That's, That's why I'm late for school. <laughs> courage that my mother had by Edna St. Vincent Millay. The courage that my mother had went with her and his mother still. Rock from New England quarry, granite on a granite hill. The golden brooch my mother wore, she left behind for me to wear. I have no thing I treasure more, yet it is something I could spare. Oath instead she left to me, the things she took into her grave. That courage like a rock, which she has no more need of, and I have.
didn't know what they were going to do, how they were going to perform it, what the costumes were, memorize all their lines, and they're going to do that at the end of May. Which is Cheshire Puss, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to walk from here? Yes, ma'am. That depends a great deal on where you want to get to. I don't care much where, but it doesn't matter which way you walk, as long as I get somewhere. Well, you're sure to do that if you only walk long enough. Well, what sort of people live about here? To the right is a hatter, and to the left is my chair. Visit either you like, they're both mad. But I don't want to go among mad people. I'm afraid you can't help that here. We're all mad. I'm mad, and you're mad. How do you know that I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't have come here. Do you plan to kiss the queen today? I should like you very much, but I haven't been invited yet. You will see me there. By the by, what happened to the baby? I nearly forgot to ask. It turned into a pig. I thought it would. Did you say pig or pig? I said pig. And I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. It makes one quite giddy. All right. such eyes, to be able to see nobody, and at that distance too, why it's as much as I can do to see real people by this light. I see somebody now. He comes very slowly, and what curious attitude he goes into. Not at all. He's an Anglo-Saxon messenger, and those are Anglo-Saxon attitudes. He only does them when he's happy. His name is Harry. I love my love with an H, because he is happy, and I hate him with an H, because he is hideous. I feed him ham sandwiches and hay, and he lives... He lives on the hill. The other messenger is called Hub. I must have two, you know. One to come, and one to go. I beg your pardon? It isn't respectable to beg. <laughs> this young lady loves you with an H. You alarm me. I feel faint. Give me a ham sandwich. I beg pardon, 
your majesty, for bringing these in, but I hadn't quite finished my tea when I was sent for. You ought to have finished. When did you begin? 14th of March, I think it was? F 15th, actually. Uh, 16th. Write that down. Take off your hat. It isn't mine. Stolen! Uh, no, I, I keep them to sell. I have none of my own. You see, I'm a hatter. Give your evidence, and don't be nervous, or I'll have you executed on the spot. Bring me the list of the singers in the last concert. Give your evidence, or I'll have you executed whether you're nervous or not. Um, I'm a poor man, your majesty, and I hadn't but just begun my tea, not above a week or so ago. And what with the bread and butter getting so thin, and the twinkling of the tea. The twinkling of what? It began with the tea. Of course twinkling begins with the tea. Do you take me for a dance? That's all you know, you may sit down. I can't go no lower, I'm on the floor as it is. Then you may sit down. I'd rather just finish my tea. You may go! Just okay. take off his head already! Consider your verdict. There's more evidence to come yet, please, Your Majesty. This paper has just been picked up. It's a set of verses. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? No, they're not. And that's the queerest thing about it. <laughs> she must have imitated someone else's hand. Please, Your Majesty. I didn't write it, and they cannot prove I did. There's no name signed at the end. If you didn't sign it, that only makes matters worse. You must have met some mischief where you have signed your name like an honest woman. That proves her guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. I don't even know what they're about. Read them. Where shall I begin, please, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning and go on until you come to the end and stop. They told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. He sent them word I have not gone. We know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you? I gave her one, they gave me two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, but they were mine before. I gave her one, they gave me two. You gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, but they were mine before. If I or she should chance to be involved in this affair, he trusts you to set them free, exactly as we were. He trusts you to set them free, exactly as we were. My notion was that you had been, before she had this fit, an obstacle that came between him, ourselves, and it. An obstacle that came between him, ourselves, and it. But let him know she liked them best, for this must ever be. A secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me. A secret kept from all the rest between yourself and me. That's the most important piece of evidence we've heard yet. So now let the jury... If any of them can explain it, I'll give them sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. She doesn't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. If there's no meaning in it, that saves us a world of trouble, you know, as we didn't try to find it. And yet, I don't know. <clears throat> I seem to be some, see some meaning in them after all. I said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? Does it look like it? All right, so far. We know it to be true. That's the jury, of course. I gave her one, they gave him two. Why, that must be what she did with the tots, you know. But it goes on, they will all return from him to you. Why, there they are. Nothing can be clearer than that. Then again, before she had this fit, you never had any fits, my dear, I think. Never! Then the words don't fit you! It's a pun! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie! What do you know about this business? Nothing! Nothing whatever. Nothing whatever! That's very important. Unimportant, your majesty, of course. Unimportant, of course. Important. Unimportant. 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 Him, um, unimportant, yes, yes, to be sure. Consider your verdict. No, no, sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stop the nonsense, the idea of having the sentence first. Hold your tongue, I walk off with her head! Off with her head! Who cares for you anyway? You got me for the sentence first!
bridges. We're pouring sand into these buckets because like we're just testing to see how much they hold. And as you can see, this is balsa wood, which is about, well, they're basically wooden coffee stirs and they're super thin. And I was told that this bridge holds up to around 240 pounds itself. What are the, somebody tell me, what are the three common states of matter? Yes. Liquid. Yep, that's one of them. Solid. Solid. Air. Yeah, air. Gases. So, gases, solids, and liquids, right? You know those? I've got over on the, in this fume hood, and I'm going to have you move over that way a little bit, but I'm going to have you put your goggles on when I tell you to. I'm going to melt down some, what's called sodium chloride. It's kind of cold. Okay, so the first thing I've got is one of these gigantic Bunsen burners, which gives me a whole lot of heat energy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt this down. I'm going to get it to go from a solid to a liquid. So this is beginning to melt. The people in the front row can probably see that this is starting to move around. We're getting some bubbles and a little bit of liquid. So this is beginning to get just about where I want it. It's just about gone down to, to the liquid phase. Okay, so that's done. And if you notice, you can probably see there's a little bit of vapor coming up off in there. And that's what's from some oxygen that's in there. So I'm going to put this screen in front of there and I'm going to drop the gummy bear in. And you're just going to watch and see if there's any energy in there. stand on this mat and then you're gonna try to figure out a way to flip the mat over yeah but the difference is I think you guys couldn't use your your hands or something like that you can use your feet you can use your hands and you can because the mat's so small we're gonna let you like tether a foot on there as long as some part of your body's on the mat and try to flip it somehow Hands down. The goal of the game is to remember who you pass to, and we're going to get around the whole circle, okay? What? So everybody put your hands up until you pass the ball. Oh, what? Can I do something? Oh. 